Emergency podcast guys, the Miami Marlins have traded John Birdie one day before opening day to the New York Yankees. The Rays also involved, of course they are, a three-team trade, but the main headline, one day before opening day, John Birdie headed to the Yankees. Tons to get into on an emergency podcast. This is Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to an emergency podcast. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you listen to the pod, of course, hit subscribe. Leave a review as well. Uh, This is your team every day and sometimes twice because, yes, this is an emergency episode and we are going for a double episode Wednesday, the 27th of March. Don't forget, guys, there's a YouTube channel, so hit subscribe over on the YouTube channel and join me in the comments as well. Let me know your thoughts on this trade specifically. Uh, John Birdie has been traded to the Yankees. Tons to get into, of course. Delighted to be welcoming back to the show the UK GOAT, Sean Barrett. Sean B, how are we doing? I'm doing well, Pete. Yeah, day before opening day, certainly interesting times. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you, me and you love an emergency podcast, so that oh, yeah. certainly gets the juices flowing. Yeah, it does, no doubt. I'd already recorded one, so this is like episode two. And yeah, the news broke. John Birdie traded to the Yankees, which in some ways uh was a surprise in that like there hasn't been any uh you know rumors of this at all uh but actually from a yankees perspective i get it like they're dealing with some issues some injury issues at this point so they had a need to fill and yeah perhaps the marlins are going to fill that need so uh, interesting one um tons to get into before we do that this episode is sponsored by our good friends over at game time yes sir and you can download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase so let's just recap the full trade here. Uh, it's a three-teamer. And of course, with Peter Bendix involved, somehow there has to be something linked to the Tampa Bay Rays. We heard the birdie going to the Yankees. We were waiting to see what came back. What we then get was actually there's a third team involved. That's the Rays. And they're also sending a prospect to the Marlins. So the Marlins send birdie to the Yankees. Uh, A prospect each from the Yankees and the Rays, and then a catcher from the Rays to the Yankees if you're still following us. So the Marlins end up getting two prospects back. Those prospects, the one from the Yankees, is John Cruz. And then from the Rays, it's Shane Sazaki. Try and say that very fast after many beers. That could be a challenge, but luckily no beers on board yet today. Um, Sean? Immediate reaction specifically on John Birdie being moved one day before opening day to the Yankees. Yeah, a bit of obviously surprise. Um, you're right that the Yankees clearly needed to bring in a major league bat. Um, with was it Peraza going down? Yeah. Um, so and LeMahieu as well, I think. So the fact that they were um, in need of of this means that it's a it's a seller's market for the Marlins. So maybe they got a better prospect than they were expecting or enough of a prospect that they were willing to do the deal now. I think we all knew that Bertie was one of those guys on the list of like expendables as far as future um, for the, with the Marlins, with the, the money that he's owed, albeit mm. not a lot of money, but for mm-hmm. a projected bench back. Um, yeah, a couple of million here or there for the Marlins is probably too much. And with the depth that the Marlins have got, he was, I wouldn't say surplus to requirements because I actually really like Bertie and I think he's been a very productive player for the Marlins. But yeah, maybe this was just a case that there was a selling situation and it was the right time for the Marlins. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned the the contract situation. So let's kind of scoop that up quickly. So John Bertie this year uh, is owed $3.625 million in base salary. Uh, there are some escalators in there linked to uh, plate appearances. So it goes up by an extra 125 grand um, from 400 plate appearances onwards. Nevertheless, four, uh, 3.625 million uh, for Birdie this year. Uh, and for those wondering, he wasn't, he isn't a true rental. 
Uh, he he also has an uh, an arbitration year next year as well. So his final year of arbitration at age 35 will be next year. So the Yankees get Birdie, uh, one of the best utility guys in the game uh, for at least two seasons if they decide uh, to uh, to ex- uh, to extend him a contract next year. So yeah, for me, the fit to your point, Sean, the fit with the Yankees here is is a good one for the Yankees. And from a Marlins perspective, just what, what what do you make on the timing here where we've heard a lot about Birdie this offseason because the Marlins have basically done nothing with the offense. They've, they've let Soler go. And the view then is, and this kind of discourse has been, well, Berger's probably going to DH more often than not. And actually Birdie's going to be starting over at third a ton for the Marlins. We then get one day before opening day and the news drops that now effectively the Marlins start in third baseman, projected still third baseman, is now traded. So what do you make of the timing of this? It makes um, no sense for me for Berger not to play at third base. I think it's bat while it's a very good bat and I think it will grow and I think a full season of him will be a benefit to the Marlins. Him at third base is so much better for, for the Marlins than at first or at DH. I think Bertie just... Obviously, the back profile doesn't fit a third baseman. His defense wasn't particularly great at third. Well, understandably, mm-hmm. why would it be? I think once the Marlins signed Tim Anderson, which is obviously a buy low um, situation, yeah. that kind of tied Bertie's hands up as far as playing time. I think realistically, if you're the Marlins, you look at him and Brujan and, and Gordon uh, and X as well, who's obviously yeah. probably one of the guys that might be getting more game time now with Bertie gone. Like, how much better is Bertie than those other guys? Um, obviously, you're paying Bertie more. Um, and if you've got yeah. someone coming to willing to give you um, quality assets for that, then, then yeah, that little bit of an upgrade that the Marlins going to lose this year in a year which, I mean, we're all pretty certain now that 2024 is probably a punt season, um, if not the beginning of a fire sale. So, this this makes all the sense in the world. Um, just yeah. bizarre that it was the day before uh, opening day. We're almost 24 hours away now, just over yeah. to the first pitch. Do you get the sense that the Marlins have been trying to move Birdie for some time? And so whilst the timing is maybe not optimal in some ways, but actually discussions like this is the plan, right? It, it You know, is this knee jerk or is this like, this has been the plan. It's just about finding the right fit uh, more so. And that's kind of where I'm leaning is like you get Bruhan in, you get Gordon in. I was looking at the bench and thinking, man, if the Marlins bench is Bruhan, Gordon and Birdie, you've effectively got three of the same dudes. And that's to your point, like that's at least one too many um, for, for sure. So I guess Birdie probably been on the block this off season in general, do you think? I think the Marlins were probably hoping, waiting on on some sort of deal to come through, waiting on that phone call. They may not have been mm. actively wait, trying to make calls to trade him, but yeah. waiting on that team to to have a few injuries in spring uh, and come knocking on the door. I'm sure teams were aware Bertie was available. It was a case of you you make the call, you send us something decent enough, and, and we'll we'll pick up the phone. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think the way that the the team is constructed and the way that the Marlins were going into the but into opening day says, yeah, they were probably hoping that one of these three or four guys was going to be on the move. Yeah, I guess. And the interesting bit, well, we're going to speak about more of this after the, the first ad, but, you know, the main headliner, I guess, back from the Yankees anyway, is John Cruz. And when we look at him, uh, he's 18. Uh, he's going to be 19 during this season. So the Marlins moving one of their one of their better performers, actually, in terms of war anyway, in 2023, and has been just a solid performer, John Birdie. He's just so good in his role. So for the Marlins to be comfortable moving someone like that to effectively go and get a flyer prospect, the dude that's like 18, um, that you know is multiple years away at this point, not like a, a top, top prospect. I mean, I know they need to restock the farm, et cetera, but you know, what does this kind of say? Like, what what kind of message does this send the fans at this point, I guess? It, it says to me that, yeah, this year is not a, a season of importance. 
and that they do need to stop that farm. I think these two prospects aren't particularly going to move that needle, but that probably mm -hmm. represents the value that, that Bertie, or lack thereof, that Bertie has in the grand scheme of things. Um, he's mm -hmm. a fine player, We're, and he's a major league producer, but he's he's not going to change the Yankees lineup in any sizable way. Um, so these prospects are, are the value that you would expect. You said flyer, I would call it a lottery ticket. You know, the, yeah. the kid has great numbers, fantastic numbers as an 18-year-old, albeit at the lowest level that you could play at. This isn't a, an 18-year-old Bryce Harper lighting that up in double A. So, yeah, yeah, it's a lottery ticket prospect, but that's that's probably the right price at this point. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's we'll dig into them in a little bit more depth after the ad because I think it's right too. And equally, we can look back at some of Birdie's kind of best moments as a uh, you know as a Marlins player. And actually, it's a really good story, like Birdie uh, and the story and his career thus far, all being like really positives. And I'm sure as John Birdie moves to New York, every single Marlins fan will have a favorable opinion of John Birdie, both on the field, off the field, and everything really. So we're going to dig into that in more depth. Before we do. Uh, it's time for our first ad, and it's our good friends over at Prize Picks. Yes, sir. Right. So, guys, Prize Picks. <laughs> it's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in, baby. Yes, sir. Football season may be over, but the action on the court and the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash, including 100 times your money right now on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. All you have to do is download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB, all lowercase. That's Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, guys, welcome back to Locked On Marlins, an emergency episode. John Birdie traded. To the Yankees. The Marlins get him back two prospects, one from the Yankees, one from the race. So we have a threesome here, a three way trade. Uh, the Marlins getting back two prospects, restocking that farm. This is what Peter Bendix shared. We need to restock this farm. And what that means is any aging vet, anyone approaching the end of their club control is movable. And Birdie, the first one to go effectively, considering that. Josh Bell, Tanner Scott are in the final years of their deals. Luis Arias getting closer to his. Lozado not far behind it. It's going to be a very interesting next couple of years. Uh, maybe even this year, to be honest with you. Um, Sean, when I look at John Birdie, though, specifically, uh, he, he he leaves the Marlins having accrued 7.7 .7 war, a career OPS plus of 93. 92 stolen bags. Reminder as well, he was the stolen base leader of 41 in 2022. John Birdie, I would say, is such an asset as a utility guy. He can play everywhere, infield and outfield, mate. The stick plays, the speed plays, everything plays with Birdie. And at 3.6 million, this is an absolute steal. He's going to be so valuable for the Yankees, in my opinion. But when you think of Birdie and, and his role, and it's multiple seasons with the Marlins, how how will you remember John Birdie? Uh, as a well, firstly a true professional, um, never heard a lick of issues with him, especially with what we've had in the last couple of weeks um, in Marlins fanship. But uh, a prototypical perfect bench bat for the major leagues. He plays yeah. everywhere. He is just about an average offensive guy. Sometimes those defensive guys can't hit, but Birdie could that genuinely hit yeah. uh, at a major league sort of level. With that speed, he is the perfect guy off that bench. Would fit, would fill in, and and did fill in um, into the actual starting lineup when required, uh, and did a serviceable job. He is a he's a true 
um, professional baseball player. And and that's you know he's not he was never going to be this big star. He was never going to ha- you know have all the plaudits. Um, although having said that, you did mention that the stolen base king that season he was he was on fire. Like he was he, he was taking bases at, at liberty. Um, no one was going to stop him. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was one of those players that the Marlins acquired um, with very little fanfare, and over many years in the Marlins jersey, became somewhat of a fan favorite. I think yeah. there isn't a single person that is glad to see him go. Um, and and certainly, I do think that the the team, um, not just on the field but off the field, is slightly weaker without him. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I just want to follow up quickly on the corresponding move uh, because we need to talk about the second prospect that's come back as well. But, you know, it felt like this roster was pretty much set, the offensive roster anyway. Um, You know, it was maybe a bullpen piece or two to be named. But with this move, considering, let me just put this out there, considering Dane Myers' spring, um, Clearly, Dane Myers does not play in the infield or at third base specifically. So what do you see being the kind of corresponding move um, from the offensive side and the active roster to start the season at this point? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we mentioned the fact that the, the Marlins middle infield depth at this point on the, on the opening day roster was quite fat with Bertie as well. So, yeah, I think Dane Myers probably is that guy. We're looking at a bench of Fortes, uh, Bruhan, Gordon and Myers. Maybe X fits in there somewhere differently. He'd be the other guy that would be the candidate, but that's that's the way I would set the the bench up. You've got a good um, influx of guys that can literally play anywhere. You've got three yeah. guys that can literally be Bertie. Um, so the, the Marlins, in a, in a year where they might not be competitive, having that depth of position really does help because you can give guys days off here, there. You don't have to make too many transactions. The Marlins yeah. aren't going to want to be keeping moving guys up and down just because they've got that positional inflexibility. With with those four guys, um, one net triple player at any one point, you've got that depth where you can just keep the the lineup ticking over day to day. Especially with the guys in the actual lineup being less so um, positionally flexible, um, for sure. Yeah. Would you have preferred? Uh, JD Martinez on this roster, and actually a, a second part to that is: Would you also prefer if it wasn't to be JD Martinez because it'd be clogging up the DH spot all of the time? For me, I look at the way this is being constructed and think they could really do with another. Like the Marlins always have two first basemen and had two first basemen on the roster. At this point, they're not planning to do that, and so for me, I, I find it a little bit surprising that they're going to go into the year with like a ton of utility dudes and just. Josh Bell as the first baseman. I know Ryers can slide there. I know Berger maybe can, but I'm a little bit surprised. And I guess it kind of goes back to, well, okay, J.D. Martinez, maybe that was ambitious, but the way things played out with Trey Mancini, for me, the Marlins indicated that they were hoping Trey Mancini was going to make this roster. And now it hasn't worked out because Mancini, like the bat didn't play. Cooper Loop obviously lighting it up in, in with the Cubs. Like, it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity here for the Marlins, and it feels like their bench is going to look really similar, and it's lacking impact guys, game-changing impact guys, that one swing of the bat in a platoon or a de- um, uh, you know, a pinch hit situation, it feels like they don't quite have that stick in this point, and maybe the, the roster isn't quite balanced. So, yeah, I mean, we mentioned Dane Myers. He's had a great spring, but you know, if it was to be Dane Myers or maybe a more prototypical power stick, would that have been a better balance here for this Marlins roster, do you think? I mean, maybe. I mean, obviously, you've got Troy Johnston down there in AAA, who's also going to oh, probably see some time. Troy season. But the, the Marlins put their, their cards on the table pre-flop, didn't they? They were, they were quite clear on this is not a season where we're going to compete. As we went deeper and deeper into the off-season, and you mentioned Coop, obviously, like mm. J.D. Martinez, Tommy Pham, all these guys... Um, that were available on super cheap contracts. The Marlins didn't sniff at any of them because, no. quite frankly, why upgrade a team that might lose nearly 100 games by a couple of wins mm-hmm. and, and spend 5, 10, 15 million? The, yeah. the Marlins are clearly saving that, I hope, are saving that money for next year and, and take a push at that point. This is a punt season for me. Mm. Um, 
And as I said, I, I am hopeful that that money is there to spend when the Marlins are ready to compete, when Sandy's back on the mound. The injuries with the pitch in this year is, is really hurtful as well. Um, in a way, I'm kind of glad they didn't spend any money because the way the pitching is set up at the moment, they probably would have wasted that money anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to finish this up just talking about the second prospect that's coming back, and it's Shane Sazaki. So, Sean, I'll let you dig into him briefly. Before we do that, it's time to let you know about our good friends over at Game Time. All right, guys, of course, and my producer's working real hard here, of course, but you shouldn't have to worry about when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And they've got those killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their bre their best, their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And listen, you may need this for opening day. The amount of promotional activities going in from the Marlins about opening day is wild, no doubt about it. So if you are going to fire into Game Time for some Marlins opening day action, then you can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront, so you know what you, you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps, baby. Tap tap, boom. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, and redeem the code Locked On for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, guys, welcome back to Locked On Marlins, an emergency episode. John Birdie traded to the Yankees. A couple of prospects back to the Marlins. It includes John Cruz from the Yankees and Shane Sazaki from the Rays. Of course, the Rays had to be involved in this. Um, we've talked a little bit about John Cruz. I mean, this is an immediate podcast. We haven't really had time to dig into it. But Shane Sazaki, Sean, what are you seeing there in that profile? The high-level numbers look interesting, uh, but clearly... Uh, an outfielder who's getting older and, you know, maybe we have to take a little bit of a pinch of salt with the numbers. But what are you seeing? Funnily enough, I'm seeing a lot of John Bertie. If you look at John Bertie's oh. minor league career, um, slightly older prospect, uh, older at the lower levels, but putting up some good contact numbers and a lot of speed. That's exactly what Sazaki's doing. The one thing that Sazaki has over... John Bertie is that his center field defense might actually carry him all the way up to the show, um, mm -hmm. which would be would be very valuable. Obviously, that's that speed is is good anywhere um, in the left and right corners of the outfield, but at center field, obviously, that value is is super high. So, yeah, I mean, again, this is probably a, a, a quad a guy like we, we've seen a lot of these guys cycle through the mines over the last couple of years and we kind of got excited by them like the Jacob mm -hmm. Myers and the Groshans and Mangum particularly for me as well um, but th this guy is in that same sort of value but having that speed that one asset that you can just pin down and say this is an, maybe not an elite skill but a very high level skill is certainly something that has value this hit everywhere has shown value everywhere slightly older than you'd like to see at every level but that speed transitions through the levels speed is not a, a thing that will come down i think that is something no. that will translate there's a little bit of pop in there but again age and level I, i'd much rather see the contact rate and the speed carry him through to the higher minors over the next couple of years and then obviously we'll see how that translates even when he uh, arrives in a marlins jersey all right, well, final question before we get out of here, and it's tough to answer this one, to be honest with you, because, well, it's immediately happened, and really this is going to come down to, you know, how these guys that have been added to the farm system develop over the next few years. But your immediate reaction, Sean, immediate trade, the grade for the trade, so to speak. You know, birdie gone, a um, couple of years of control, solid dude, super solid dude, and super productive, actually, for the Marlins. But he's moved, they get two prospects back, Two interesting looking guys uh, for certain. So, how are you seeing this one? I'll give it a B plus. Um, there's, mm. there's, I'm not. There's not enough there for me to get super excited about the return. But I also yeah. understand that the value that Bertie had um, 
diminishes that to a certain degree. And again, if, if Bertie was going to add two wins to the team this year, I don't see much point in winning 67 games over 65 games, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Marlins have been kind of trending this way. This kind of predates Peter Bendix in some ways, but he he added even more into this mix. But like Kim was loading up on middle infielders. Peter Bendix has basically kind of moved most of them on or DFA'd them, but then added in his own wave of them, including, well, Tim Anderson being the headline, but you know, v, uh, Vidal Bruhan, uh, Jonah Bride's in there. Like they've added a ton of dudes um, that, you know, all are in a similar mold. For me, with Birdie, I look at it and I think this trade makes a ton of sense for the Yankees as like a really obvious short-term stopgap situation that can just plug and play for the Yankees. And he can then just be that super util guy for the rest of the year. I think Birdie ends up putting two war plus for the Yankees. Uh, and I think he ends up um, seeing out his final year of club control with the Yankees as well next year. Could absolutely see that. Too early to tell for these guys, for the Marlins, but, you know... They, they, they said they want to stock the farm. The guys that are ending their club control, like we just have to accept that's the business model and will be the business model. And it's not just the business model for John Birdie. It's the business model for Urias, Tanner Scott, Josh Bell, Jesus Lozado in a few years' time too. That's just what's going to happen. And so mentally we're accepting it. And it's about, from a club perspective, being able to identify talent in other clubs' farm systems um, that, that can help the club and give them that six, seven years worth of control beyond. So, yeah, I'm with you on the, you know, this is probably like a B for me. Like, feels like a bit of a what, like, I'm not pumped about it. But I think that probably lingers, the, the lingering feeling is that I'm just not overly pumped about the Marlins' chance in 24, which is disappointing as a fan, considering we're coming off a postseason berth. And whilst they've had a full rebuild in, in the front office, to have effectively done nothing, with the, the the big league roster, I think is is well, it's indicative of the of the prices of the tickets. Let's just put it that way. Like the Marlins have the lowest price of tickets right now by some distance, and I feel like that's indicative of what they've done for the uh, the big league roster. With that being said, appreciate you joining me and the UK Goat on Locked On Marlins, an emergency podcast episode. John Birdie to the Yankees, where I think he will do well. The Marlins get two prospects back. One from the Rays and one from the Yankees. Wait to see uh, what the future holds for those guys. But in the meantime, the Marlins, they look to, well, they look to do something in 2024. We don't quite know what it is. It's probably going to be further stocking of the farm. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for opening day. We'll see you then.